Chapter 14. That's not a surprise. That's a kick in the teeth. Juanita led us back to the street, and Benny and I rode a bus home in silence. I felt like I had all the pieces to the puzzle, but I couldn't get them to fit. By the time I got off the bus, I was confused as ever. That night, our, da our dad hinted twice at a surprise. Our super suits? Benny's eyes were hungry. Our super suits are down in the root cellar. Ah, 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 Dad said, making a mock, scolding motion with his fingers. No questions until after dinner. Benny ate with gusto, shoveling food into his mouth, like it was a race. After Denny, dinner, Rodney stayed upstairs to clear the table and do the dishes. Dad and Mom led Benny and me down to the main room of the root cellar. Dad leaned against the work, work table and tried a little too hard to look casual. Mom sat in the chair and smiled, but she looked nervous, like she was about to put on a big show, clearing, big show. Clearing his throat, Dad said, as you boys know, this family has a wide variety of superheroes, and those superpowers are used for different purposes. Benny raised his hand, but Dad ignored him. I could tell he planned out as this speech, and would keep in, and would keep on talking until he was finished. Many of the family's superpowers were quite useful during battles, but other powers worked better in the special ops missions like Great Uncle Pete over in Oak City. He can shrink to roughly the size of a taco. When we need somebody to sneak into a small place, he's our man. Dad clasped, clasps, clasped his hands behind his back. Other powers, like your brother Rodney's, for example, are much better suited for background work. Rodney is an important member of our team, even though he almost never gets to go to the battles. But he still gets to go every once in a while. Then he said, choosing his words carefully, and he still had a super suit. Dad looked at Mom as if asking for help. Mom said nothing. Finally, Dad looked back at Benny. Your mother and I have a long talk, and we've discussed it with a few other members of the family. I think for right now, it's better to have you boys stay away from the battles where it's safe. Benny smiled and nodded. I think I was surprised as, Mom, as Dad and Mom. When I saw Benny's eyes grow wide, Wait, he cried. You mean, you never get to go to a battle? Well, Dad said, I don't know if you'll never get to go to a battle, but for now, it's just not. Then he was out of his chair in a flash. That's not fair. Desperate, he looked in my direction. Raptor, tell them the battles aren't even dangerous. The Johnsons aren't trying to kill us. They think they're superheroes, too. Now wasn't the best time to try and explain everything to my parents, but I can leave my brother out to drive but I couldn't leave my brother out to dry. He's right, I said. Dad, you told me on patrol that I should find, find out for myself. I don't know all the answers yet, but something isn't right. I think we should try and sit down and talk to the Johnsons. Dad rubbed his sides of his head with the tips of his fingers. Dear, can't you help me out here? Mom finally spoke. The, the other thing to remember, Benny dear, is that you're both due for a growth spurt. We don't want, sh want to get you a super suit and then have you grow right out of it. Growth spurt, Benny said, almost shouting. I don't get a super suit because I'm due for a growth spurt. We've come up with another way you could help this family, Dad said. And this is the big surprise. Benny folded his arm tightly around his chest and glared at Dad. I hope for Benny's sake that Dad had come up with a suitable replacement for not getting suits. When we go on special ops missions, Dad said, we usually drive a big van. There's plenty of room in there, and the team usually does some last-minute pre prep work on the ride to the location. You know, check their gear, do a few stretching exercises, things like that. You don't want to pull a hamstring in the middle of a special ops mission, Mom said, nodding at Benny and me. That continued, but whoever is driving can't prep. Sometimes they show up and the whole team has to wait while they double-check their gear. So your mom and I have decided that you boys can become an experts at all the motor pool vehicles, and you're old enough to drive. You can prove yourselves very valuable by... That's the surprise, Benny said, his eyes bulging out. We get to work the motor pools? The motor pool is a very fun place, Mom said. Benny's mouth hung open. That's not a surprise. It's a kick in the teeth. I can't even drive for four more years. In the meantime, Dad said... You'll start learning the different machines, keeping them maintained and clean, and ch checking oil and tiny and tire pressure, things like that. 
For the past three years, I'd had a metal, mental image of what I'd look like as a superhero. I'd imagined what my super suit would look like. I'd imagined the heroic things I'd do. And now, that mental image was replaced with a new image. I could see it, as clear as the cowlick on the top of Dad's head. Me, in overalls. Grease covering my hands and face. I had a wrench in my hand, and I was working on Uncle Chambers' Datsun. Our family had really boring cars. We had to so that we could fit in, and now I gotta work on all these really boring cars. Rafter Bailey, mechanic to the superheroes. So we're supposed to wash cars and change oil until we're old enough to drive? Benny said. And then we'll drive everybody to the cool missions and just wait in the car? I could tell Benny was close to crying. Maybe when we find, finally do get our super suits after our growth spurts, they will come with cute little chauffeur, chauffeur hats. Dad's voice became firm. Your cousin Dirk is in charge of the family mover pool up to Grandpa's up at Grandpa's ranch. Starting tomorrow, both of you boys will report there after school on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Plus, every other Saturday, you'll learn all about the vehicles his family owns and anything else Dirk asks you to do. This isn't a request. This is your duty as superheroes. This is how you will help fight the Johnsons. Dad finished his speech with a shake of his fist. Benny's voice sounded weak. The battles aren't even dangerous, he pleaded. I'm sorry, son. I knew Dad meant it. Benny fled the room. Mom and Dad looked at me. If they, if they told me this a week ago, I would have felt exactly like Benny. Angry, frustrated, and disappointed. But my understanding of the world had been turned upside down. Something else was going on. Something that was more important than battles. I'll talk to him, I said. I found my brother on the bed, face down in his pillow, Benny said. Benny said, this is our chance. His voice was muffled. It's finally our chance to be real superheroes. You're already a hero, I said. What do you mean, he asked. I couldn't help but, but, I couldn't help but smile. Aren't you the one who is going to stand up for a super super in the school library and nothing more than a jack-in-the-box belly button? <laughs> Benny didn't move. You believe Juanita? I asked. Or do you think she's lying? Benny rolled over. I don't know. It seems like she's telling the truth. What do you think? I think I'm missing something, I said. Something obvious. If she is telling the truth and our family stopped fighting, I finally understood. Then you'll never get to go to battle. Benny nodded. Why don't you drop and give me 50, I said. Benny snorted. I can only do 16, he said. Then drop and give me 16, I said, smiling. Benny sat up on the bed, his head hanging. I didn't have to imagine my brother's disappointment because I felt the same way. Benny pushed himself off the bed and knelt on the floor. He started at the carpet for a few he stared at the carpet for a few moments, then raised his head and looked at me. One way or another, I'm gonna get my super suit, he said, and when I do, I'm gonna challenge Grandpa to a push up contest, and I'm gonna beat him. I watched Benny do his push ups and move the pieces of the puddle puzzle around in my head.